All right, so last but not least is the Cynthia Skullbase Award by Bobby Stark. He'll be speaking about gamma knife radio surgery of skull basement and geomas. Thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. Going back to the late eight, or to the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, authors such as Horsley, Krauss, and Balance noticed the great difficulty of resection of skull basement and geomas, often due to their intimate relationship with uh, key vascular and neural structures. Additionally, these authors noted that uh, further surgery following an initial surgery was often very difficult due to their adhesive nature and scar tissue that, that would build up. Uh, currently, surgical treatment is the preferred therapy for progressive symptomatic skull based meningiomas, but it's important to consider the wide range of morbidity and mortality, the rates of complete resection, as well as the recurrence rates reported in the literature. Uh, looking back, uh, Simpson grade one and two resections can often be achieved in roughly 40 to 90 percent of skull based meningiomas reported in the literature. Additionally, recurrence rates vary considerably from roughly 12 to 90 percent in this study by Abidite et al. Recurrence rates at 20 years were roughly 60 percent. It's additionally important to consider the rates of uh, morbidity and mortality associated with resection of these lesions in this study by Nanda et al. He reviewed the, li the literature as far as morbidity and mortality, which is denoted in the bottom right-hand corner as related to resection of petroclival meningiomas. And you can see here that gross total resection rates vary considerably in the literature, as did the rates of morbidity and mortality. And as such, these authors noted that over time, they have moved towards a goal of complete radical resection to one of maximal aggressive resection with preservation of neurological function, and then following patients with uh, radiosurgery often for reoccurring or progressive lesions. So the current treatment options include radical resection, as we talked about, subtotal resection with following these patients with or without stereotactic radio radiotherapy, which has uh, currently been advocated by quite a few authors. Additionally, upfront radiosurgery in a select number of patients, as well as fractionated radiotherapy. The objectives of our study were to evaluate the long-term outcomes of patients treated with skull-based meningiomas, treated with gamma knife therapy, and to assess both neurological and radiographic outcomes, as well as to assess factors predictive of favorable outcomes. In our study from 1989 to 2006, gamma knife therapy was used to treat 255 skull-based meningiomas. Uh, patients with a minimum follow-up of 24 months were included. There were 54 males and 204 females. The median age was 55 years, and gamma knife was applied as upfront therapy in 109 patients and as salvage therapy in 146 patients. The median follow-up was 6.5 years with a range of 2 to 18 years, although any patients with a complication or with tumor progression before 2 years were also included. Looking at the overall locations of the lesions, clival lesions were representative in 16%, CP angle in 17%, Petrus in 2%, Paracellar in 54%, and Petroclival in 17%. Looking at our radiosurgical parameters, the majority of these lesions were treated with multiple isocenters with a mean marginal dose of 14 gray, a mean maximal dose of 34 gray, to roughly the median isodose line of 41%. Looking at overall tumor size, the mean pre-radiosurgery size was 5 cc's, and mean post-radiosurgery size was 4.3 cc's. Looking at over, overhaul patient cohort, 86% uh, had decreased or stable size. And when this is broken down further, you can see uh, that the majority had a decrease in size. 14% had an increase in size during the follow-up period. Looking at our Kaplan-Meier analysis, at three years, tumor control rates were 99%, 96% at five years, and 79% at 10 years. It's important to see when you analyze these Kaplan-Meier analysis that they're often uh, swayed by the number of patients that you have on long-term follow-up. The number of patients that we have with greater than 10-year follow-up is very limited, and those are often the patients that we followed for a long period of time because they had tumor progression. So the numbers when you look at 10 to 15 years or farther out, the numbers drop off significantly and are heavily swayed by those that had tumor progression or recurrence. We conducted univariate and multivariate analysis for predictors of tumor progression. All factors with a p-value of less than 0.15 were included in multivariate analysis. 
you can see here the univariate uh, predictors that were included in the multivariate analysis. This is a Kaplan-Meier analysis uh, stratifying by patients that did and did not have a history of prior surgery. What you can see here is there's a trend toward decreased tumor progression in those patients with a history of surgery with a p-value of roughly 0 0.15. This uh, dropped out in multivariate analysis, though, and the only predictors in multivariate analysis of tumor progression were those patients older than age 65, and decreasing marginal dose was also associated with tumor progression. We also sought to evaluate our clinical outcomes post gamma knife Therapy edema was noted in a very select number of, of, of patients, and shunting as well was necessary in a select number of patients. Looking at our overall clinical outcomes, 90% uh, of patients had stable or uh, improvement in their clinical symptoms, and 10% had new or worsening neurological function. Looking at univariate predictors of worsening function, again, we include all factors with a p-value of less than 0 0.15 into multivariate analysis, and you can see here those with clival or petrus-based locations, those with increased volume, those with decreasing dosing, and uh, we're more likely to have new or worse symptoms. Additionally, patients with further follow-up, and obviously uh, tumor correction was associated with new or worsening function. In multivariate analysis, again, it was very similar with those with clival or petrus-based locations, those that were treated with uh, decreasing maximal dose, as well as those with increasing follow-up and tumor progression were associated with new or worsening symptoms. Looking at our study limitations, I think this is, uh, this is important to include, uh, and, and just for a short discussion here, clearly a lack of an untreated control group limits our ability to fully define the benefits and complications uh, resulting directly from radiotherapy. Again, the natural course, uh, although this has been discussed widely in the literature, it's not clearly defined, and obviously we lack an untreated control group in this case. Again, this is a single institution experience, which obviously affects both selection, referral, as well as treatment bias. Lastly, further cognitive testing may be necessary to better detect subtle, to detect subtle differences noted following treatment. In conclusion, we found that in our select group of patients, gamma knife affords a high rate of tumor control with preser preservation of neurological function. It does so with limited complications. Tumor progression was associated with older age and lower treatment doses. Those with clival and petrus-based locations and increasing doses were obviously also associated with increased risk of new or worsening neurological deficits. And lastly, I think that we still certainly agree that surgical therapy is a very important uh, means of treatment for these complex lesions. Uh, further analysis should be done, though, to better define which patients should receive upfront stereotactic radiosurgery versus upfront microsurgery. Thank you very much. We we'll have. Um, yeah, so uh, Dr. Al Mafti will be discussing the results. Uh, good, good afternoon, first, and uh, this is the great audience I would like who's staying to the last minute. So I'll give you the last word. <laughs> uh, you said I clicked it. Will go. The, the right click. Le left the click, yeah. It's not going. Okay, go ahead. Uh, next. Uh, now, this is a good data. Uh, the conclusion, you could put it totally the opposite. Everything they said, you conclude no, no, no before it. Uh, there is several aspects of this. I would like to discuss, but the time does not allow, so I will discuss only one point in it. Next. It clearly, next. It clearly, it's, it's a falling control. They got three years, 99%, five years, 96%, 10 years, 79%. And the question, what happens in 15 years? Next. This is two paper, which is this presentation is a combination of the patients presented in this presentation from the same group. 
At that time, it was paracellar and posterior fossa. And look at the 15 years, less than 50% control. Next. So what happened to the patient who progress, who gets out of control? Next. This paper in the literature has a very large number and the followed some of them is beyond the 25 and 30 years. And those patients who treated with radiosurgery for meningioma, look at the mortality, life, not out of control, not get bigger, not has a problem. Next, next, 53% survival, 47% dead. What did they die of? Next, 67% of those patients died from their progression of meningioma. Next, why these meningioma benign patients dying 15 years later if they received radiosurgery? Next. Because that's a very good example. Next. A small meningioma, benign, for residual giving radiosurgery. Next. It got out of control. Next. After a period of control. And now it looked more like a grade two. Next. Next. And now it get out of control after additional radiation and surgery. Next. Next, and now totally wild anaplastic meningioma. Next, and this is the important things. The pattern of the patient who is falling out of control. And we written this early on when we start to see it. After a good period of time of five, six, seven years of a beautiful control, they have an explosive growth because they transform. And this original 13 patient now are the norm which I at least see. Next. So what radiosurgery does to you? We refrain from giving radiosurgery immediately post-op if there is a residual tumor. And we had 167 patients of them. And you could see in red what's their Kaplan-Meier course. While you could see this paper and all the other paper, the, the graph is correct. If you give to residual tumor after surgery of that gamma knife, it's in white up here. Those two line meet about 12 years. So the only thing radiosurgery could do for you is to buy this time. It shifts the recurrence. It's only about from, instead of reoccur at five years, you reoccur at 10 or eight years, eight or 10 years. Next. And what's the price then? They have 10% complication of the treatment, not the long-term progression, not the long-term effect of radiation, not, 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 just 10% procedure complication. And it keep adding up. This is the word from the presentation, a trend toward the clinical deterioration on a longer follow-up. You keep adding them up. Next. So then compare it with the other alternative we have, is to get these the tumor. It can't be bigger than that because it won't be eligible for radiosurgery. 
there was a lot smaller tumor than that in the group presented. And remove it. Next. And to remove it is to obtain a grade one symptom. That tumor, dura, and bone. Next. And you, if you obtain a grade one symptom, they live happy forever. That's it. Finished. Next. So what price then they have to pay up front? So we looked way back, a few years back, of a tumor that is the maximum size of radiosurgery. I didn't have much that small. Next slide. But out of those 31, the mortality is zero. Skull base I'm talking. Mortality is zero, morbidity is zero. Most of them is petroclival and CPA angle meningiomas. Permanent cranial nerve deficit, one trigeminal dysesthesia. Two transient seventh nerve palsy that improved, uh, not improved, recover. And only one of those has a recurrence nine years later. Next. So surgery, it gives you cure forever, does not temporize for five years, and has a very low mortality and morbidity. It should not be replaced or thought to be replaced, but with something that gives you better than that. And certainly radiosurgery does not. Thank you.